This video is sponsored by Magellan TV. In July of 1974, the USSR fired the first and only cannon to be shot into space. Haunted by fears of US spacecraft inspecting or attacking Soviet spaceships and satellites, the R-23M Kartek 23mm cannon had been secretly installed in the Salyut 3 as part of Project Almaz, a top-secret military space station program camouflaged in the cloak of civilian space exploration. Fully armed and operational, the space weapon would remain one of the world's most closely guarded secrets until the fall of the Soviet Union. The Soviet secret space cannon test isn't the only time the space cold war with the US threatened to turn hot. In 1985, the Soviet Soviet 7 space station lost power and tumbled towards Earth, possibly offering the US the tantalizing opportunity to kidnap it aboard the space shuttle Challenger. Based on a true story of the cosmonauts sent to rescue the station amid rumors of a classified US operation, experience the space race at its most extreme in the dramatic retelling of Salyut 7, history's most daring space mission, on Magellan TV. Visit try.magellantv.com slash darkdocs for a one-month free trial to watch this action-packed docudrama along with other fascinating documentaries. Magellan TV is a new type of documentary streaming membership, founded and curated by filmmakers with featured genres that dive in-depth into topics such as war, ancient history, science, and nature. You can even go deeper into space with the six-part documentary series, Disasters in Space. Support Dark Docs and sign up for your free trial today. Visit try.magellantv.com slash darkdocs or click on the link in the description below. The MOL The United States set off the military space race under a clandestine program intended to secretly establish combat capabilities hidden behind the more public missions of the wider space race. The program was highly classified, with Vice Admiral Richard Truly telling James Bamford from Business Insider, quote, You just couldn't tell anybody about it. Nobody. Projections on logistics for the program, named MOL, or Manned Orbiting Laboratory, were carried out with the American intelligence community with support from the Air Force and NASA, under the National Reconnaissance Office from 1963 to 1969. Together, the combined forces were tasked with the goal of spying on and opposing the USSR in space. Documents that have since been declassified have allowed the public to access information about the specific objectives and proposals of the operation. Among these was a call for research into methods to take down Soviet satellites by firing projectiles at them or otherwise pushing them out of orbit. The reports even included an elaborate proposal to capture Russian spacecraft by swaddling them in a heat shield material and dropping them back to a research facility in the U.S. for extensive inspection. The Douglas Aircraft Company was contracted to build the MOL, with NASA's Gemini B spaceship potentially serving as a vehicle to take astronauts to and from the station. NASA added a circular hatch that would let astronauts move past the heat shield to enter MOL. The chosen astronauts were only told about the reconnaissance nature of the proposed mission after selection. Budget constraints, however, and an increased focus on civilian missions related to scientific discovery took over, and the MOL was never sent to space. The manned orbiting laboratory was cancelled in 1969, three years away from its first planned flight. Seven of the 14 astronauts selected for the program were moved to the space shuttle program, and all of them eventually flew to space. The program was cancelled due to the projected potential for cost-effective uncrewed reconnaissance satellites that could carry out the same tasks that MOL was intended for. Yet interference with and destruction of foreign satellites remained an American priority. One method for the U.S. side was even proven in 1985 when an F-15 fighter jet was used to shoot a missile at an outdated U.S. satellite in low orbit. This was officially the only historical case of spacecraft destruction by a weapon. During the development of the MOL, the U.S. prioritized keeping the project a secret, but despite their best efforts, the Soviets discovered at least partially what the U.S. was up to, leading to their own exploration of military space capabilities. Project Almaz The Kremlin launched the top-secret Almaz program at the start of 1960, fearing the military and espionage potential of American spacecraft. Discovery of America's advances with the MOL only served to fuel and push the determination of the USSR to craft its own attack and self-defense space weapons. A respected engineer for the OKB-52 Rocket Design Bureau, Vladimir Chalami, pushed for the idea of a military space station, and his lobbying efforts were successful in bringing about Project Almaz, meaning diamond in Russian. 
The manned outpost was primarily intended for reconnaissance, but it would also be armed. Development took longer than planned, as work on heavy payloads and advanced sensors turned out to be more challenging than anticipated. The Soviet military also temporarily lost interest, as the regular satellites were still churning out valuable information. The project was put on hold when NASA announced the launch of its Skylab space station in 1973, which meant the USSR would miss out on setting the first civilian space station. The government and space program decided they needed to beat the Americans, and focused on sending a small civilian station partially made with parts of the Soyuz craft and scrapped parts from the planned Almaz station. This new station, called Salyut, was successfully placed in orbit in 1971, attaining a new first for the USSR. Once that political victory was achieved, the Soviet government greenlit continued work on Almaz, camouflaging work on the military stations as part of the Salyut lineup. While American intelligence officials were able to determine some aspect of the truth and could identify which stations were truly civilian, the public remained in the dark about the program. The station was comprised of several sections. The orbital piloted station, the actual space station module, the functional cargo block to dock and load supplies, and the VA spacecraft, the launch and return vehicle for cosmonauts which could be reused for up to 10 trips. The orbital station would have a diameter of 13.6 feet, or 4.15 meters, and living space of 1,680 cubic feet, or 47.5 cubic meters. Three-man crews would be sent out along with the station by Vladimir Chelemy's proton rocket UR-500. Once the station was in orbit, they would step into the OPS from the VA through a hatch located in the heat shield, just as the one in the American MOL station. Stays were supposed to last between one and two months. After the original cosmonauts left, the station would be recrewed and supplied by a TKS resupply craft. Almaz was fully integrated into the Salyut program in order to keep it a secret from the public and from hostile governments. Out of three Almaz stations placed in orbit, two were successfully crewed. All three were launched without their VA spacecraft due to delays in its development and the assembly of the Proton rocket. As the TKS resupply aircraft was never finished, the two stations that were crewed received the cosmonauts from modified Soyuz spacecraft. In orbit, the space station only saw those initial visits and withdrawals, with only one of the stations reportedly receiving supplies from an unmanned craft. Neither the VA nor the TKS were ever completed. By 1982, the Soviet Union had placed seven Salyut space stations in orbit, three of which were part of the military's Almaz program. A space cannon. The USSR didn't just intend to only use the military space station for reconnaissance purposes. They also wanted it to be armed with a cannon. The design and construction were given to the KB Teichmas Design Bureau, headed by Alexander Nudelman, who had overseen several aviation engineering accomplishments after the Second World War. The cannon was an altered version derived from the Tupolev Tu-22's tailgun cannon, the Richter R-23. The original gas-operated revolver autocannon featured on the first Soviet supersonic jet was a 23mm weapon that could fire up to 2,600 rounds a minute. Tweaks to the weapon by Nudelman's team reduced its caliber to 14.5mm. Due to the secrecy surrounding the entire endeavor, certain details of the cannon's capabilities are either speculative or have otherwise not been corroborated. It's alleged that the shot could travel as far as two miles, although it's unknown whether this estimate refers to its full capabilities in space. Estimates on the rate of fire vary depending on reports. Theoretically, the modified cannon could fire anywhere from 950 to 5,000 shots per minute, with a safer estimate possibly approaching the 2600 rate of fire from the original cannon. The projectiles could be shot at a theoretical 850 meters per second, with other reports claiming a slower 690 meters per second. The cannon was tested on Earth, where it was capable of piercing a metal gasoline container placed one mile away. The primary challenge for cosmonauts attempting to take down a satellite would be aiming, as the weapon was placed on a fixed mounting, and the entire 20-ton station would need to be oriented towards the target. The Test on January 24, 1975, the Almaz station, camouflaged under the name Salyut 3, was scheduled to be deorbited. The crew had departed from the station several months before, in July of 1974. The USSR had yet to practice actually carrying out a cannon shot in space, and were concerned that recoil, or some other aspect of the untested cannon, would affect the station after firing. Yet now, the conditions were prime for a relatively consequence-free test. Just a few hours before the deorbiting, the test was carried out. 
The jet thrusters were ignited at the same time the cannon fired, so the expected recoil could be countered. Unofficial reports claim the cannon shot between one and three blasts, counting 19 shells in total. The details of the test, and the factual results gathered, remain classified under Russian leadership. After Salyut 3 was deorbited, the Almaz project winded down and was eventually cancelled. By 1982, the Soviet economy was slowing and on its path to collapse, which would still take around 10 years to arrive. The remaining grounded Almaz stations saw a different destiny unfold than the one intended, as three of them were launched as Almaz-T, unmanned, heavy radar-carrying satellites for reconnaissance purposes. Only two worked successfully and stayed in orbit. The hulls of the Almaz-205 and 206 were sold to the private company Excalibur Almaz, which planned to launch them as newly crewed spacecraft in 2015, but in March of 2016, the company announced plans to have its equipment exhibited instead, due to lack of funds. The current location of these Almaz models is unknown. The truth about the Almaz space stations and the fact that one of their cannons was fired were kept secret by Soviet authorities. Limited public access to the subject was only given by Russia after the fall of the USSR. OPS-4 Before the program was cancelled, the Soviet Union had planned to launch a new and improved, possibly more dangerous, military space station. The OPS-4 was intended to carry two interceptor missiles for space-to-space -space warfare instead of a conventional rapid-fire revolver cannon. It was expected to be the fourth military Almaz station. During development, the OPS-4 was modified in terms of design and technology on multiple occasions. It needed a bigger, stronger docking port intended for the TKS spacecraft, which was cancelled in the early stages of development, rather than the lighter port for the Soyuz that the previous three Almaz stations had. The station would have seen the introduction of a Mech-A synthetic aperture radar with three panels and a manned return vehicle that could be reused. Issues with the return vehicle and TKS made the Soviets replace the idea of the return vehicle for a second docking port. The OPS-4 would have carried a Sheet-2 space-to-space cannon with two unguided missiles, but the proposed project was grounded before the scheduled launch in 1978 and then terminated along with the rest of the Almaz program in 1979. Many of the secret details of this highly classified Soviet program remain secret. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to Magellan TV for sponsoring this video and for offering a free trial to Dark Docs viewers. Please visit try.magellantv.com slash darkdocs or click on the link in the description below for access to even more premium documentaries streaming across all your devices without interruption. If you need a recommendation, be sure to check out Salyut 7, History's Most Daring Space Mission, or the six-part documentary series, Disasters in Space.